Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, as uh, mentioned, my name is Amir Kursay. I'm from Clemson University in South Carolina. And basically, this I'm presenting uh, my, my student work. Matthew Adamson is graduated. And this is part of the study that we are doing, and part of that study. And it doesn't seem as smart as using uh, uh, carbon nanoparticles or graphene in concrete, but if you look at the amount of construction and demolition waves in annually in the US and the world, you will notice that we are dealing with huge amount of uh, waste materials, right? And brick and concrete waste can constitute up to 75% of the construction and demolition waste. Now, uh, considering the world annual production of clay bricks, which is about 6.25 times 10 to the 8 tons, about 7 uh, uh, times 10 to the 6 ton brick go to the landfill each year. So we cannot reuse them, and it's just waste material. So one solution is just reusing them, recycling them, and using them. How we can do that? We can use them as aggregates, coarse, fine aggregate, to make the concrete again. Or we can it's, uh, uh, basically grind them and use it as a cement replacement, which is another part of this study which I'm not going to present today. So the advantage is good, basically, preserve natural aggregate sources. It's not an issue in, the, in North America because we have a lot of natural aggregate. But if you go to, for example, Japan, maybe the a lack of natural aggregate is a problem. So we can use pre, uh, basically already um, produced aggregate like uh, brick to make concrete. Also, this is important in North America, reduce waste and waste storage. Landfill is becoming a huge problem here in the US and in Canada as well and getting rid of this uh, basically U.S. material it could be very uh, useful. So if you look at the map of the U.S., most 70, over 75% of the brick shipments come from this area, and this is basically South Carolina. So we have a lot of brick manufacturing plants in Carolinas, including South Carolina, and this is one of the reasons that we uh, approach this problem because we have a lot of, as I said, manufacturing plants in South Carolina. So uh, we use this approach. We uh, replace some part of coarse aggregate. We, did, we use flat grade. We didn't use gradation. And we replace 25% uh, uh, and 50% of the natural aggregate with the brick aggregates. And, uh, we also used uh, new bricks. We crushed a new brick in order to have un more uniformity to look at the fundamental issue of that. And all of the previous studies, which are not too much, they focus on the uh, mechanical performance of the concrete made with uh, recycled brick as their aggregate. In this study, we look at the durability of concrete, not only the uh, mechanical property, but uh, also the other uh, durability issues, which I'm going to talk uh, about that in a minute. Just uh, to note this, I think it's important. We are dealing with very similar, relatively similar chemical composition. If you look, compare brick, clay brick that we use here, and Portland cement. Actually, we have more silica here. So. Just I want to mention that if you grind it well, you may get some pozzolanic behavior as well. Just a uh, note. So we use 12.7 uh, 12 millimeter as our uh, uh, coarse aggregate. We use type 1 cement in all uh, samples. And for mixture, we use 35% aggregate, uh, coarse aggregate, and 25% uh, fine aggregate with water to cement ratio of 0.42. We use three different mixtures, as I mentioned. 100% natural, uh, natural aggregate as our control. We replace 25% of the coarse aggregate here with uh, brick aggregate, and we replace 50% of the natural aggregate with the brick. The rest of the mixing procedure, everything stays the same. 
We prepared three uh, different types of the specimen. Of course, we prepared concrete uh, cylinder for the mechanical test and also uh, durability, some chloride penetration tests. We prepared six by 12 inches cylinder to measure the electrical properties of concrete. And we prepared all the concrete prism for freezing and thawing uh, tests. And also we prepared some corrosion specimen. Uh, basically, we followed G109 uh, standard to prepare our specimens. So just, uh, I'm going to briefly present you the result. If you look at the absorption, we have a little bit more absorption break compared to the national aggregate. We have relatively similar bulk specific uh, gravity. So we know that we are dealing with a little bit more porosity in brick compared to the natural, uh, to natural aggregate. Now, if you look at this lump, which shows the workability of concrete, uh, we have much better slump when we increase the, when we replace the ag natural aggregate with brick. It could be due to more porosity. Uh, <coughs> this is the only way that we can basically explain this. Density absorption void of the hardened concrete after casting, so we have relatively the same absorption. And volume of void, again, we have a slight difference, not significant difference in the volume of the hardened aggregate. Sorry, hardened concrete. We're not talking about just the aggregate. Uh, mechanical performance, I'm just showing you just the compressive strength. We, we got similar results in the splitting test as well. When we replace Ag our aggregate, natural aggregate, with the uh, brake, we got better compressive strength. And I should point it out that the natural aggregate that we have in South Carolina, generally they're, they're very weak. They can pass the duty requirement, but they're weaker than the aggregate, for example, in, from uh, Indiana. So it could be due to this uh, problem. So if you replace that from the mechanical perspective, actually it's better, 50% you got about uh, 49 MPA compared to 45, which is a little bit improvement. Now, if you look at the, for example, freeze tar, if you look at that, control, all of, by the way, all of them passes the 60%, which is the requirement by the ASTM standard. So they pass the 300 cycles, but look at the result of the control versus the uh, samples with brick, and if you increase the brick content, you have better performance. M I think it's ba ba mainly due to the more porosity, which act like a, a, a small airworks in the system. So from the freeze point perspective, it behaves better. But look, when you, you look at the chloride penetration, which is important, why? Because if you want to have a structural concrete, when you want to have a steel in your concrete, this comes to the equation. So we have more penetration uh, 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 when we have 50% uh, break compared to the control. It means that if you have concrete, uh, chloride, chloride can penetrate more uh, into the system. And this, this result basically confirmed by rapid chloride permeability test as well. It means that we have more permeable, permeable material when you replace the aggregate with the break. Also, electrical resistivity, we just use electrical impedance spectroscopy to measure the electrical property of concrete. And you can see that uh, the control specimen shows higher resistivity compared to the brick, which complement the result of a rapid chloride permeability test and also the chloride penetration. We also measure the uh, corrosion activity of our G109 specimen. This shows the corrosion potential. It shows the probability of corrosion, and also we measure the corrosion current density or corrosion rate. And again, it shows that uh, we have better performance <coughs> in the control specimen versus the, when, uh, the case that we replace the natural aggregate with the brick in both of them with corrosion potential and also corrosion current density. We have higher corrosion current density when we have 50% break compared to the natural aggregate. So, as a conclusion, of course, we know that brick itself has higher porosity and absorption compared to the natural aggregate, at least the natural aggregate that we have in South Carolina. Uh, so 
if we replace natural aggregate with break, we have better workability. Um, now again, we have uh, we, when you replace the natural aggregate and with the break, you get better a little bit better mechanical performance. Uh, however, if you if you look at the durability aspect, not just the mechanical aspects of that, for example, colloid penetration is getting worse by replacing the aggregate with the uh, break. Also, both of them passes to 300 cycles, but again, if you have break, it performs a little bit better. Electric current resistivity uh, shows that when you have natural aggregate, you have higher electric current resistivity compared to the case that you replace that with the uh, uh, break in your system. And all the corrosion, you have worse, you have uh, the worst behavior, the worst behavior would belong to the case that we have 50% aggregate compared to the natural aggregate. Mm -hmm. And mainly due to the more penetration of chloride to the system. Uh, now, the important thing, I think, the main conclusion is that if you want to replace uh, a natural aggregate with break, it's fine. Uh, in, uh, in case that you don't want to use rebar in it. If you have rebar, for example, in pavement, it's fine. It's better, actually, as, uh, uh, than the regular natural aggregate. But if you want to use it a, a structural concrete, if you want to have rebar in it, you should be very careful and do more tests on that. Now, the other thing uh, that I just want to mainly uh, barely mention here is that if you grind the brick, it has pozzolanic behavior. So in it increases the uh, strength ex uh, um, significantly. And also, it, dec it decreases the penetration of the chloride in your system. For example, we did use this grind uh, break. We replaced the cement with the ground uh, break, and we found that significant improvement in ASR. So combination of using coarse aggregate replacement and, ground, uh, and replacing cement with the ground break might be a good choice if you want to use it in a, as a structural uh, concrete. Thank you very much, by the way. This is the T-Man Hall at Clemson University. It's a nice, uh, the oldest building in Clemson and a nice brick building, so I just want to show that to you. And thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Do you have any questions, please? Question? Yes. Uh, it could be two things. It's true that the pozzolanic activity of brick, in the case, uh, the coarse aggregate brick, maybe it's not significant, but it's still it has some activity. Maybe I'm not sure about that. So we might see some. We might have some uh, pozzolanic activity even of the coarse brick aggregate. The other issue might be that the porous, we have more porosity in the aggregate. It may act as an internal curing agent. The difference was just two megapascals, not significant. It's not you know, maybe two percent increase, but it could be because of these two uh, two hypotheses. I cannot say hundred percent. These are the reason, but. We did that as well. Sorry, you are right. Absolutely right. I just want. As I said, the coarse aggregate in South Carolina generally is beginning a week. And the strength of the brick, or brick by itself, is slightly higher than the natural aggregate. So you're right. Might be, this could be another reason. Yes. Yes. Not durability, just the strength. Yes. So, what's the significant finding as the chloride limitation is higher? That means drawback is not. If you have if you have a steel in it, yes. But on the pavement or you go to go into use it in the foundation and there is a chloride like the amount of the 
Exactly. Absolutely. Maybe, as I said, combination, if you can activate the pow uh, break powder, if you enhance the pozolonic react activity of the break powder and add it in addition to the break aggregate, you may be able to balance this situation. Or maybe if you add fly ash, for example, or silica film, something, to decrease the permeability of the matrix, you may be able to uh, overcome this problem. But if you don't want to do that, if you just want to replace aggregate with brick, don't do that. If you have uh, rebarring it. If you don't have a rebar, if it's just pavement, maybe it's good. Any more okay. questions? No? All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much.